even like the grief of when you're on a weight loss journey the grief of your old self like you've gain weight and like now you no longer can even relate to like where you were before what i want to say to you is that that is okay and you're allowed to grieve the past you're allowed to grieve what's been lost and what's no longer but you're also allowed to chase joy you're allowed to chase happiness you're allowed to chase freedom you're allowed to free yourself from the pain that you may be experiencing. You're allowed to be happy today, sad tomorrow, feel joy right now. And then, hey guys, it's Felicia with Happily Ever After Living. Today is Saturday, April 9th, and we're back in the gym. Oh my gosh, let's get it. So today, as you can see from the title of this video, I will be talking to you guys about how I'm currently processing a lot of emotions on this 100 pound weight loss journey. I think that this is something that's just not talked about enough, you know, as far as trying to lose weight, like your emotions and your hormones play a huge part in that. And I just don't think people talk about it enough. Um, today I'm actually going, it is currently like seven, it is currently 7.48 in the morning and I am attending the funeral, the memorial service for one of my cousins. Um, that recently passed away at 58 years old and that is insane to me if any of you guys follow me on any other social media platform you know that I talk about retiring at 57 like literally all the time and just to think that I don't know and 58 like that's literally the same age as my mom so it's kind of tough so first the first thing I'm going to do is get in a quick workout before going because that is one of the ways that I've learned how to process my emotions and then after that I want to talk to you guys about just how I'm currently processing my emotions like during this weight loss journey as well as I did have a mini binge session last night after I attended the wake and I saw the body I knew it was coming I actually told my husband I was like listen we need to go by the store because I wanted to buy foods that would I wanted to buy foods that wouldn't like wreck this journey so I'll be sure to share that with you guys too after I get this quick workout in all right let's do this so first thing I'll be doing is getting in some treadmill intervals I will be blasting some music here here's my speaker that I, the portable speaker that I use I don't know if it's still available it's like old old but I'll link it down below I've seen a lot of change been through a lot of pain some things are not the same as they were a year ago But all will be okay, I move on each and every day The past is where it stays, way back a year ago I've changed for the better this time I thought I would never be fine I strive just to say I'm alright And for the first time in a long time I'm alright I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain Some things are not the same as they were a year ago But all will be okay, I move on each and every day The past is where it stays Way back a year ago Before I jump into the next set, let's take a little bit of a breather. So I want to share with you guys like how I used to process death and then like the other dimension I went to and like where I am now. So when I was younger, like a kid through like age, I don't know, probably before I became a mom. So then 
whenever someone died like I literally just wanted to jump in the casket with them because it was just such a deep a deep hurt and pain that I didn't I really didn't know how to process it honestly I didn't and a lot of it came from a place of like I guess if you really think about it this is for me wait time out I want to say that I'm just sharing like my experience and the way that I've processed it I'm not telling anyone how to process your emotions or how to process um, death in particular like I can help with certain types of emotions but with death that is out of my wheelhouse completely I'm just sharing my experience and some things that have worked for me so like I said when I was younger I just wanted to jump in the casket with them and I think a lot of that for me came out of like selfishness of like I was gonna miss this person they were no longer gonna be a part of my life and then you know like you guys know what I'm talking about like when someone leaves this earth it's painful you know like they're probably more than likely in a better place but like here all we can think about is like how are we supposed to go on in this life without them so once I became a mom, I realized that I didn't have the space or the capacity to process death and the amount of emotional energy that I would spend before, I just did not have that available. Like I was a mom, I was working full time. I, so what I was, what I'm going to say is that all I could do was hold space for other people in my family. Like if someone passed away, all I, can, all I knew to do was just to be there for them and I was unable to like process my own grief like I would just stay really busy um, I skipped funerals like I just did not I, I couldn't like I just I didn't know how at that time right um, I even remember like when my grandmother my mom's mom passed away we have a huge family grandmother had 13 kids and I just remember um, holding space like for my mom and my aunts and uncles and you know, for my siblings, my younger siblings, I'm the eldest, and my cousins, and all I could do, even at that age, like I was literally holding space for other people, and I never processed it during that time period. And it was literally like months, months later. And this was when I ran all the time, and one time I was out running, like literally, this was, looking at it now, it probably should have been embarrassing, but it, no, I was out running. Um, in my old neighborhood like in my 30s literally in my 30s and it hit me like a ton of bricks and I had like during that run I had been thinking about her and like all of our memories and because I was like not the first grandchild but I was the first granddaughter so you guys know like there's just this there's this bond between the granddaughter like I would spend the night at her house I was with her all the time so it hit me like a ton of bricks and I just and I just fell down like I went over into the grass and I just fell down and I started bawling like bawling crying I was not in front of my house I was just in the neighborhood and I could not stop crying like it was just it was so bad and finally I was able to get myself together and you know walk back home but it was in that moment like I just knew I I wasn't able to so then when my grandfather passed away same thing like I I if I'm not mistaken my grandfather passed away and I went to work the next day because I just, I didn't know how. So last year I started therapy and I started therapy because of something else. Like I was going through like a lot of overwhelm, like my schedule was jam packed. I didn't know how to deal with it all. But as any of you who've ever gone through therapy before you learn that you may go to therapy for one thing, but it actually helps like in so many other areas and that was when I learned like a lot of there's just a lot of things that I learned that helped me to be able to process grief a lot better not that I'm good at it <laughs> I don't know if anyone's good at it but I'm definitely a lot better over the last year I can see the improvements that I've made um, because up until my father-in-law passed away like I just didn't attend funerals like I I did it but I had therapy I started therapy almost a year ago now literally like last April it was a gift that I gave myself for my birthday so last April a year ago I started therapy and since then I was able to go to his service and now I'm going to another service today but I'll share with you guys some of the things that I've learned number one I told you guys before I'm an empath so I know that today when I go I'll be holding space for a lot of people and that's okay I'm okay with that um, but I've also learned that 
I'm allowed to grieve as well. Like I'm allowed to um, grieve in whatever way makes the most sense and what feels the best for me. Um, everyone doesn't grieve the same, they don't. And number two, another thing that I've learned is that it's okay to have conflicting feelings around grief. Um, I think that was something that I really struggled with and it was one of the reasons why I didn't go to funerals because you have the funeral service, which is, in most cases, it's really sad. Like you're saying goodbye to someone you love. And afterwards, you have like the repast where you're with all of your family and all of the your friends and that person's friends and family and there's this unity which i think is important with grieving but then there's like the laughter and the joy that you experience when you're with these other people like for instance today you know like there's gonna be sadness right and then there's also gonna be family members that i haven't seen in so long and that I love them as well. So there's a lot of joy and happiness within that and before I struggled with the conflicting emotions. So I've learned that it's okay. That's why you guys hear me talk a lot about like happily ever after living. It's okay to have tough times and to experience sadness but to also still feel in a midst sense of joy and happiness like it is okay I didn't always know that I didn't always feel that I I've always felt that but I felt guilty for it and I no longer feel guilty for that um and also when people pass away it's okay to be sad because of your own memories of them and it's okay to be sad because you're gonna miss them and just because your memories are different it doesn't make it any better or worse and just because like for me i'm not a person like i cry but i don't like to cry with the group like i like to process things independently and individually but just because you're not outwardly crying it doesn't mean that it doesn't hurt you just as much as it hurts the other person like there's no pain rating when it comes to trauma you know so yeah like i wow i don't know if you guys saw my um video where i when i did the workout here in the home gym the morning of my father-in-law service like after that workout like i just sat and i had such a release when it comes to grief and like i just sat here after that video and i i prayed and i spent time with god and there was just so much comfort and so much assurance and reassurance to me that everything I had been thinking and feeling like that it was okay and I think what I want to say to you today is that whatever it is that you may be going through whether it be death or the loss of whatever like you know a job a business a relationship um children are acting right like whatever it may be even like the grief of when you're on a weight loss journey the grief of your old self like you've gain weight and like now you no longer can even relate to like where you were before what i want to say to you is that that is okay and you're allowed to grieve the past you're allowed to grieve what's been lost and what's no longer but you're also allowed to chase joy you're allowed to chase happiness you're allowed to chase freedom you're allowed to free yourself from the pain that you may be experiencing you're allowed to be happy today, sad tomorrow, feel joy right now. And in two hours, I'm probably going to feel a lot of sadness. It's okay to be sad and laugh. It's okay to... No one can regulate those feelings for you. You're in control of you. And just because your grief or your sadness or your pain doesn't look like the next person, it doesn't make it wrong. doesn't make theirs wrong either, but it doesn't make yours wrong. Um... So yeah, that's what I wanted to share with you guys today. Hope this video wasn't too long. Today, I do have the pleasure of speaking about my cousin. She was an amazing woman. She was, I'll share with you one part that 
hold on let me find my phone so towards the end of my speech today i'll be sharing first corinthians 13 4 and 8 i'm gonna go back and talk about my cousin if you guys know first corinthians 13 4 8 it's about how love is patient love is kind love does not envy it does not boast okay so i go back and i'm talking about um my cousin michelle was patient she was kind she did not envy she did not boast she was not proud she didn't dishonor others she was not self-seeking not easily angered she was easily scared though gosh that woman was scared of everything but she was not easily angered she kept no records of wrongs she did not delight in evil but she rejoiced in the truth she always protected she always trusted always persevered and even with her death she never failed because through all of us her legacy will live on because she was the epitome of love so i feel like i'm in a good place i feel like i'm in a good place to where there's a lot more to it, but I feel that I can deliver this to my family in a way that represents her because she was just so, she was such a beautiful soul. She was such a beautiful soul. Oh, also I forgot to tell you guys, I was gonna share with you what I binged on. So I had one of these and one of these. These are, I think they're like a hundred and something calories each. And then this jar of pickles was full, was full these are zero calories and so these were 180 calories each. and also for me selfishly you know for me this is also a reminder to focus on this weight loss journey and to get myself healthy and i want to be around a long time for my family and i'm just hoping i mean freak accidents happen every day but i really hope and pray that if i can continue to get myself more and more healthy that at least my health will hold up so that I can be here and be present for my family. So that's all I have for this video. You guys don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.